Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in the dojo today. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Now, if you're like me, I got tired of driving my car and uh, I wanted to try something new and different, so I checked out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used to drive a 2013 Prius, then I used the Fair Program and I got a really clean and spacious Hyundai Elantra with a great stereo system for $195 per week plus taxes. That includes everything, your rideshare insurance, and unlimited miles. And since Fair partners with Uber, you can earn a very strong bonus for a relatively low number of trips and pay for the car. This program is available in California for now, but there are programs all across the country. So check the Fair website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out. Download the Fair app and get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100. That's our code, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right, all right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey. Have I told you about Audible? Sign up today to get a free audiobook from Audible. This week, I'm highly recommending a classic book for entrepreneurs and anyone working on their plan B. The book is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. I read this book and it was my mind was blown. So you can go to therideshareguy.com forward slash audible for a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook. That's right. You can get this book right now. Audible is great for drivers who want to learn on the road. Go to therideshareguide.com forward slash audible and get the four-hour work week by Tim Ferriss right now. Let's start the show. I'm super pumped to bring you today's interview with Matthew Durking. Matthew is a war veteran. He came back from the war. And he got right to work. He went from being a war veteran to being a student at UC Davis and then uh, driving on the weekends, sleeping in his car. You're going to hear the whole story here. Um, I want to apologize. The quality of the audio isn't up to par. Uh, I had to use a uh, phone connection for this, uh, this interview, but I got it. And once you settle in, I think it's going to be worth it. Uh, so enjoy, enjoy this uh, inspiring story about a guy who really pursued his plan B and, and obtained it, and he's living his dream. So without any further ado, here's my interview with Matthew Dirking. So Matthew, can you tell me uh, just a little bit uh, you know, about who you are? I understand you're 38 years old, you're a, you're a veteran, and... Um, yeah, just take it from there. Yeah, so um, I'm a Navy and Army veteran, Iraq War veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm now uh, working for the state of California. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got four kids. And just uh, I just graduated from UC Davis back in June. And mm-hmm. I'm just, um, just trying to get it all together after, you know, getting out of the military. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it took me about seven and- I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to ask you how long. When did you get out of the out of the service? I got out of the uh, army in 2011, September 2011. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then, um, so I read a little bit about what you were sharing with with um, Harry. Yeah. So you've been so your driving history. So you drove 
uh, for Uber and Lyft since October of 2015. So that's uh, that was like four years ago. Um, can you tell me what that was like for you? Well, um, I think it was around 2016 when Lyft started changing some of their requirements. So I hadn't driven for them for since about 2016. I see. Um, All right. And so I went Uber specifically only because my car had aged out even back in those days. Oh, I see. So your so your car didn't qualify for Lyft anymore. Yeah. So it didn't make sense for me to grind for Lyft. Mm -hmm. And then so around springtime of 2016, I started driving in San Francisco. And um, and so I just was just I had been working in the Sacramento area, but then um, my wife found out I could make more money. So she said, you're going yeah, to San Francisco. Lot, lot. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, right. you know. Yeah. I, I had almost the exact same experience. I, I started in December of 2015, and um, I drove in Sacramento for about a month, and then I started seeing YouTube videos about the gold rush, you know, in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Yeah. And then I started to go down on the weekends, and I did that for about another month, and then I said, well, forget this. I'm just going to move down there. Um, but you were driving down. Yeah, how many days a week were you going down to the Bay Area? Uh, depends, but most of the time I was down there at least four days. Um, wow. uh -huh. um, it, it alternated between weekends, um, and then, or like Thursday nights through Sunday nights, sometimes even Thursday nights through Monday mornings doing right. the commutes and coming home. Right. Um, right. So, now, did you drive down and, and come back each day or no. did you, you get an no, Airbnb no. or? No, you... I was in, I was one of the road warriors in the car. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Where, um, so I know there's a there's a uh, Safeway store off of uh, Westboro where I, I know a lot of people park there. A lot of people go and they park at the at the beach. Um, where 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 did you find uh, a good place to, uh, to to spend the nights? So I was at the Safeway at Geary and Webster, in, uh -huh. off of Japantown, Fillmore. Right, 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 right at the corner there of Geary and Fillmore. Yeah, Fillmore. and yeah. Um, I just had discovered one night. Uh, sitting there, um, that um, a lot there was a lot of stickers around me one night. <laughs> so I figured out they were sleeping there. So I figured if there was going to be a bunch of cars there, it was probably safer to sleep there than anywhere else. Right. right. So I used that place for a good couple of years, um, mm -hmm. and then I found out that you know the majority of the the guys that slept there were Middle Eastern or mostly Afghanis. Uh huh. So it's it's it was where almost all where they all kind of congregated. Uh huh. So um, yeah, I kind of talked to some of them, get to got to know some of the those guys. Sure. Most of those guys were from out here in Sacramento and everything too. Mm hmm. Yeah, I know people come from Sacramento, from Fresno, from even from L.A. Yeah. Uh, Bakersfield. I've heard those stories too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, okay, so just because people are really curious about people sleeping in their cars. So you would drive, would you drive till about what, like till the bars closed till like three in the morning and then sleep until, you know, like nine in the morning or what hours did you choose to sleep at the Safeway there? Yeah, I, I would, I'd get in to, you know, depending on how tired I was between two and three, three thirty. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes I'd end up in Walnut Creek at, Two forty-five, three o'clock in the morning, and have to drive back out there. But I would drive back out there mm -hmm. and um, sleep in that sleep in that parking lot, and um, then I would um, go to the gym. I'd sleep for a few hours, end up at the gym, take a shower, and then I'd be back on the road around ten, ten thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. What gym did you go to? A twenty-four hour fitness? Yeah, uh, Planet Fitness there in Daily City. Got it, got it. Okay, yeah, I know that one too. Good, good. All right. So you were pretty. Uh, Pretty focused then on 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 making money. How many uh, how many? Uh, it says here you your wife was having her third child. When were your first two children born? Uh, I have a um, fifteen year old from my ex wife. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. with my current wife, I have a five year old uh, boy, a three year old mm -hmm. girl, and now a five month old baby. Oh wow! Got it. So. Got it. Wow. Okay, so you're going through all of this. So. Um, and what's so 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 this is uh we're calling this life after rideshare driving because you had a very definite plan 
to do this for a while, but not long term, to uh, to move on to pursue something that you really had a passion for. Can you tell tell us what you know what it was that you were so focused on achieving? Uh, my degree. Uh, um, when I was in the army, I um, so I had a break in service between 2003 and 2008. Mm-hmm. So I was in the Navy from 1999 to 2003, and I got out a number of years and wanted to go back in the military. So mm-hmm. I ended up back in the, I ended up in the Army um, mm-hmm. when the Navy wouldn't take me back. Mm-hmm. So, but I, um, you know, I was one of those bad kids in high school. So um, <laughs> <laughs> right. college yeah. was out of my reach when I went in the military. Uh-huh. And yeah. then, um, so when I went in the Army. Um, I really did my homework because I know I didn't want to stay for longer than the three years I signed up for. Right. And I found out that um, after the age of 25, colleges really um, consider you a re-entry student. Mm-hmm. And so you can kind of, you can, you know, your high school days, your permanent record, is, you know, it doesn't exist, right? You know, <laughs> uh-huh. kind of a fresh start. Yeah, you got kind of a fresh start. So um, I found out that, um, that, um, Schools like Stanford, Columbia, um, all the big names, Harvard, placed a premium on veterans coming out of the wars and stuff like that. That's great. And that they weren't holding their high school um, transcripts and you know bad grades against them. But mm-hmm. you know you had to you, you know you had to, to go to community college and really get involved in your grades and and you know and and so I did that and. So I took my shot at Stanford and Berkeley, mm-hmm. um, and I, I I didn't get in, but I got into Davis, which you know wasn't you know nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> no, that's, that's a, <laughs> a great school. That's a fantastic school. Yeah, yeah and um, so yeah, so I spent a good, um, a good you know three years at community college, working and um, GI Bill, and then when that started running out, I needed to do more work, so that's how I ended up doing Uber. Mm-hmm. My last like three years, three and a half years took me to get my degree at Davis. And when did you? So when did you graduate from from Davis with your degree? In June, June this year, June fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. Oh. Well, congratulations! Yeah, yeah that's so that's, my hundred and six year plan came together. That's uh, <laughs> it's, it's inspiring. That, yeah, you know, you you were going through all that, drive driving down there. So let's see. So you're working like three or four days a week. Yeah. 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 So you were making probably like three, what, anywhere from two fifty to four hundred a day, depending on the day, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know driving in the San Francisco very well. Cause I, uh, and I played the short game. You know, a lot of the a lot of the guys played the long game. I played the I played the short ride game. So I was just grinding for those bonuses. You know. Right. 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 So, that Uber was offering. Yeah. For a yeah. while, they they had that five hundred dollar bonus for one hundred and twenty trips. That oh was, my gosh, that was so, amazing. Those were the was, days. <laughs> those those were the days. I mean right. I remember I started driving down there and I was like I, I heard about this bonus and I said I was at the hub, you know, where it used to be before it moved to Daly City, it was uh yeah, it was near Petrero Hill. And um yeah, I said, What's what's with this bonus? I hear about this bonus and they said, Oh, you you qualify you can get the bonus and I said, Far out. I'm driving for Uber. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what it was. Yeah. And that was the yeah. whole point of doing it was you couldn't you couldn't split the app time. You had to spend you had to get those forty rides a day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and to get that bonus. Right, right. And that you was try- hard to do. <laughs> oh. Forty a day is, is pushing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, you gotta be you, you really gotta be selective. You can't take any long rides down to San Jose. Yeah, because it would knock you out knock you out of contention. Yeah, exactly. I remember and when I um, that's when I started telling people no. I had about mm-hmm. two thousand rides under my belt before I started learning that. So I had to, yeah. And before I finally said uh, no, I'm not. I don't care if I don't care if Travis gets in my Uber right? and he wants to go somewhere. It's gonna <laughs> no, you're not going. Yeah, that was a lesson I learned too. After my first year, I realized I'd lost some bonuses because I was taking every ride that got in my car. And at some point, I just said, you know what? I cannot take it in Marin County right now. You know, I'm not just not going to do it, you know. Yeah. 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 I took a guy to Napa one time. Uh-huh. And um, 
he worked for Uber and mm-hmm. he seemed kind of like a big guy, big shot. And I didn't know exactly who he was, but he was like a security consultant or cons- security guy with Uber. Yeah. And it's two hour drive up there. I mean, he made it worth my while. Like, I mean, it was like an $80 trip and he gave me like an $80 tip. And, mm. but, um, you know, four hours, mm-hmm. two up, two down. And then One I ended up, I missed that. I missed that bonus. It went from uh, went from a 500 to 350 because the next tier down was 350. If you remember that? Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, it, it ended up costing me $150, and I was like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's interesting the progression of how how we be how we all become like really good drivers, and that we our priorities change. You know, as we realize what hurts us and what helps us, and and what's what's more important to us. Well, that's what I loved about Harry and, and his service and his website was um, just reading that. I mean, that stuff wasn't there. We all, most of us, you know, we, you know, learned in the last five years on our own. Right. You know, I mean, Harry's blog had just started and it was out there, but, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, unfortunately now the the industry, you know, Harry's, you know, Harry's blog and, you know, yours now and all that, all these resources now are here, but. Now it's just not the same. The game's not the same anymore. No, it's much hard, much harder now. You certainly can't make the kind of money that we were making back then. No, it's not the same at all. Well, good for you. Well, so just I just want to say, you know, thank you for your service and and congratulations on getting this great new job. Tell us about the job. So you, so it just says you're working at the California governor's office, so Gavin Newsom's office of emergency services. What exactly yeah. are you doing? What's your day look like now? So we're yeah we're cabinet level agency um we you know we're um i work in the um legal office over here um Mm -hmm. supporting the the attorneys and the day-to-day dealings of of um what goes on at the agency here so um you know um so right now we're in the middle you know emergencies and fires and we have a big center here that they have operation center where they coordinate all the resources yeah um but yeah, the, uh, the, the state's in a bit of a crisis right now with all yeah. the fires. Yeah, and so uh, again, the legal world doesn't stop. So <laughs> our day to day, you know, doesn't stop. So mm-hmm. um, yeah. we're one of the we're one of the busier offices. And so yeah, I support about seven attorneys and um, in the day to day paperwork and you know like a paralegal and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. that's great. Um, that's great. Well, let me um, so. I'm curious now because because you you know you got your degree and and you're interested in 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 the legal side of things. If I had to ask you to, to look in your crystal ball, what what changes do you think we're going to see over the next five years with uh, listed Uber and, and rideshare driving in California? Oh, I spent a lot of time thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, my one of my first questions is is um, and I think investors need to ask this question, and I don't think anybody is 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 how is Uber and Lyft, how are they going to make the pivot from um, this IT building an app to, um, they're not a car company, um, they're not a real estate company, and they're not a customer service company. And so you're going to, and, and so I, I, I hear them talking about how they're going to replace us with self-driving cars. Mm-hmm. But I want to know, you know, you know, you're not, they're not preparing themselves to run a fleet of vehicles. Um, you, you're, you're, you're going to have to hire hundreds of mechanics. Mm. Um, you know, who's going to fuel the cars, who's going to maintain the vehicles. Um, you know, where are you going to store the vehicles? I mean, I remember, uh, Travis talking about how his vision was that in most metropolitan areas, he didn't want he, he didn't want somebody more than three minutes away from picking up a passenger. Right. So, I mean, I figure, I figure it's going to take three self-driving cars to replace me on the road. Mm. Mm. Because, I mean, if, you, if, if it runs out of fuel or it's going to run out of fuel, it has to go back to a station, right? right. Immediately right. if it's heading back to a station, it's going to be dispatched. Um, and then if, it, if something else happens to that second vehicle, then you need a third vehicle. So you're going to need three vehicles for every vehicle that you have on the road where human beings are getting on and off at any period of time, because we turn it off and we turn it on wherever we're sitting. Right. 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 
Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's millions of vehicles. Right. So, and, you know, I, I I just don't see how they're going to make that pivot. And No, because I mean, our, our road systems are not set for that many cars. I mean, as it is right now, San Francisco is clogged up, you know, the majority of the time with traffic. Yeah, and so there, there, where there was that. Um, so I surprised a lot of uh, people by telling them that you know I don't know if if Uber and Lyft are going to live five, ten years out. If you're going to see these companies exist, yeah, <laughs> people, I, uh, cu- customers well, were surprised by that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting that they 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 haven't made a profit and they don't, don't seem to have presented any compelling uh, plan that they're going to be profitable. Yet, so many people invested money um, in, in these ventures. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it's a very questionable future that, that the companies have. Even with the self-driving cars, that sounds like a good idea, you know, in theory. But I don't, I don't know how quickly society is going to embrace cars on the road without people in them. Well, see, you know? this, that's another thing is, so, like, you know, say, like, GM, you know, We'll say GM as, as an example. Let's say they create self-driving cars for personal use, right? Mm-hmm. They have to mm-hmm. teach a car to get you from your driveway to your parking space at work to the pickup drop-off zone at school for your kids to the parking spot at store and then back to your driveway, right? Mm-hmm. You can teach a self-driving car that pretty easily. Uber and Lyft are telling me that they're going to program self-driving cars and the conditions – that rideshare drivers have to do in cities like San Francisco, cities like New York City, just just those are the two, and L.A. are probably the three most complicated cities, and you're going to mm-hmm. tell me that you're going to be able to program self-driving cars to do that in those conditions? No, you're not. Mm-hmm. And then that's one thing. And then my other thing is 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 you you can't program you can't program. You know, we're not supposed to do it as rideshare drivers, but we all do. We pick up in places we're not supposed to. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. You gonna you can't program self-driving cars to break the law, right? Right. right. So right. you're not gonna pick up people where they're not supposed to go. So you're gonna tell me that you're gonna have Uber passengers that used to are for ten years at least or longer who are used to getting picked up the way they want to get picked up, and then now you're gonna tell them, oh, you've got to walk a block or two to this zone to get picked up in the rain or. I, right. You, you have to re, you're going to retrain your whole customer base, and you think they're going to be happy about that? Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, it's, it's a it's a big ball of uncertainty, isn't it? Yeah. There's just so many things. I had a um I had one of the uh, Uber self driving engineers in my uh, uh he, in my Uber one time, and he was talking to me about how um about one of the breakthroughs they've had in AI about teaching computers. So they were teaching um, a computer to play Super Mario Brothers 3. Mm-hmm. And he said, go out on the internet and watch that video. And so I was like, okay. And so, it, 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 you know, it looks like somebody's playing Super Mario Brothers 3, but it, you know it's a computer. But it took, it took them millions of times to teach this computer how to play Super Mario Brothers 3. But then I realized, so the computer goes through the level the most optimal way every every time, right? The least amount of, I guess, control or clicks or whatever it takes to get through the level. It right. can get through. But I realized it wasn't, and it took a million times to do that, but it wasn't doing things like collecting coins. Um, it wasn't doing anything like collecting power-ups. It wasn't doing anything like killing the enemies or finding the secret pipes or anything, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, "That's a so." I was like, "This is a terrible analogy because, sure, yeah, you've taught it to drive the streets, but mm-hmm. my job is to collect the power ups. My job is to collect the coins. My job is to find the secret pipes, right? Like, right, my job right. is to get the points, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything that you would do to play a video game as a human being, you know, in Uber, you know, Uber. That's all the other stuff that comes along, you know." That, all the, the all com- the subtle all the subtle complexities that we exactly have all the subtle yeah. complexities that you know, we as human beings can do mm-hmm. that a computer can't and so I'm right. not impressed I'm not impressed when I hear Uber and Lyft talk about self driving cars I, yeah. I, I I I it's a pipe dream it is a pipe dream for them and 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 all all GM and all those other people have to do is beat them to market with self driving cars that can get you from point A to point B 
And, you know, you know, and then there's another pipe dream out there where people think, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, um, I'm, I ask, well, who's going to pay for all these cars? Right. You, you know, right. I'm like, I'm like my 2008 Honda Civic, the maintenance alone on that thing, you know, I mean, she doesn't look like much, you know, Yeah. but right. you know, just the maintenance on her alone, you're going to tell me that you're going to put all these people in these cars. Um, so what happens when one component goes out that's like a radar or a laser um you know and then that that safety components out on these cars so then what you know who's going to pay for all that maintenance those are going to be expensive components yeah and and right now all of us drivers are the ones who are paying for the cars exactly uber and lyft they don't even have to pay for the cars you know so in san francisco they would say oh well well you'll have you'll have rich people who will you know They'll they'll buy these cars and then you know they'll go to work in them and then they'll set them to self you know self driving mode and and then you know and I'm like you're gonna tell me that somebody who's wealthy is going to go to work in their personal vehicle set it to go drive around do Uber and Lyft all day and then at the end of the day when this wealthy person is tired and comes this car comes back and how many people have been in it doing god knows what they're going to want to climb in this car after they're exhausted after a long day at work and drive home in i would not heard that theory <clears throat> so yeah. this this yeah. whole like people sharing things idea is not going to work i mean i mean and if you're and then i said and then i would tell them i'm like if that were true then our public transportation systems would be packed every day because people wouldn't mind sharing space but in America, people don't share space well. We're no. not European or Asian countries. No. We don't share space well as people, especially people who have money. No, it's it's considered lowbrow to share space with other people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. You bring up I can a lot go of all day. Points. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> well, let me let me let me just wrap up asking you. Um, you know, can you can you. Can you summarize how rideshare driving served you to get where you wanted to be today? It was great. Um, yeah, yeah. It sounds like um, it was it was exactly what you needed to support your family and and get through it and 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 get your degree. Yeah, it, it was, and um, it was it was great. And I mean, it it it, it would be hard to start now the way I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'd be, it'd be hard to start for anybody, but I mean, it's still something that can be done. Just gonna have to put a lot of, a lot of time in. And it was, um, it, it, it just got, what, what was great about it at first was that it was a, it was a lot of hours and it was a lot of hard work, but, um, but I could fit my schedule into it. Yeah. And then the game started changing where I was more at their whim. Yeah. And that that's where it got hard, right? That's yeah. mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that was the reason why I couldn't make the money anymore was because I had to, because when they when they started doing the split bonuses during the week versus the weekends and right. and all of that, that's when it yeah. got the, it got really difficult for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if I could have lived in San Francisco and you know live in San Francisco and 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 drive. You know, I I might not have ever quit that job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. but you you know, I've, you know, obviously eighty ninety percent of people or more can't do that. It's impossible. No. no. You know, and yeah. so sleeping in your cars and just um, but it served me great. I I would recommend it to people who can do it if they can do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I I agree. I. I it's been great for me. I, I like to travel. I've been able to just stop and go travel and come back and pick it right back up. And, and yeah, it's allowed me to yeah. do all these other things at the same so time. So the other component that served me was, um, was the fact that I've, I've given about 1100, you know, 1100, 11,000, excuse me, 11,500 rides roughly right. about there between Lyft and Uber. Yep. And so by my estimations, I've had about 15,000 different people in my Uber. Yeah. And so telling, yeah. 
putting that on my resume, putting that on my resume and talking about that interview where I've in the interview where I've in shared close proximity in a in a vehicle with 15,000 people really impressed, you know, my my employers. You know, we we still talk about that now. You know, that was one of the things that just was blew their mind in the yeah. interview was when yeah, I've had personal interaction with 15,000 different people in my car. You're right. Um, right. you know, the yeah. the the soft skills that you mm-hmm. develop during Uber, the talking to people, you know, um just there's all kinds of the soft skills that people mm-hmm. I don't think Uber drivers understand what they're, you know, um what they're developing in the cars, you know, when they're trying to make well, a think, transition. Yeah, I think, I think, um, yeah. So I just hit 26,000. <laughs> yeah. Just rides. I don't know how many people, I guess that probably puts me around 30,000 different people. But um, yeah. And I've written about it, that, that there's such an opportunity in each, each customer, each passenger that gets in your car, you know, to improve your skills, to improve your ability to listen yeah. To improve your ability to engage, to, well, to, to learn some empathy. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, um, you know, one of the horror stories was um, one of my last like few weeks I was working. Um, I was driving. Um, um, where was I? I was um, I was up above Grant up there in the um, the nice area, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. Um, I was just driving down the hills coming over there from Japantown and I locked eyes with this like young lady and she just had the fear of God in her eyes. Mm. And so, and I never do this, but something just told me to stop. Uh And I, I stopped and I was like, are you okay? And she couldn't have been, you know, more than 20, 21, 22 years old. If if Mm. she was even that. And she was so drunk and like i said i never usually just pick up people like that yeah. but she just was like just in distress and i picked her up it took five minutes just to figure out an address out of her i took her to the address where she said she was supposed to go i, I, I there was nothing more i could do beyond that but take yeah. her to the address she said she wanted to go but yeah you know yeah. but just the empathy of you know yeah. of that like you know where if you know if you had some person pretend to be an uber driver or even some of the uber drivers are horror stories who had saw her you know what i mean and yeah, picked her uh, up. Yeah. who knows what could have happened to that poor one young woman right you know right. and so it's, it's just stuff like that you know yeah. Yeah. you know you get yeah. to help people you know I've, yeah. I've gone to some of the poorer areas where these mm-hmm. some you know they look at me like wow you came at two in the morning to come get me right you know right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. because drivers yeah. won't do it Right. No. You know, a lot of times um, you pick up passengers and they're just so grateful that you show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Exactly. Because I don't. You know, they're not coming to. You're not. You know, you're not going to certain areas. People aren't going to certain areas, like Bayview and all those places. Oh yeah. Hunters Hunters Point. Hunters Point. When you're out there at one, two in the morning and you pick them up and they're like, "Wow, you you came and got me." (laughs) Yeah. 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 You know. So great. Matthew, it's been awesome. Let me ask you the three questions I ask everybody on my podcast. What's uh what's your favorite movie of all time? Uh the Matrix movie and and now they're coming out with part 4 so I am doing backflips. Seriously? Yep. Wow. No, The Matrix is uh it definitely my top top 5 movies that yep. I've seen it like 50 times. It's yep. uh just uh you are the one, Neo. Yeah. M- my favorite uh, is is part 2. Part 2. Okay. Yes. All right. Because yeah. I love The Architect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, great. Um, on the wallpaper on your phone, uh, what, what pictures do you have? Uh, I don't. I actually still have the old standard <laughs> Samsung doohickey. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Fractal. Okay. Right. Nothing's right. changed. Great. All right, last question. Uh, Matthew, you, you're, you're walking into the room. And you've got a theme song that's playing as you enter the room. Your favorite song, you, the, the the vibe you want to set as you walk into the room. What's what's that song? Oh, oh my gosh. Um, probably uh, uh, we're not gonna take it. <laughs> we're not gonna take it. Yeah, we're not gonna take it. That song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's probably my theme song. That's the kind of the chip on my shoulder I carry around. All right. All right. Great. Well, it was awesome talking to you. 
the audience, my my audience is going to love uh, hearing your hope, the uh, the hope you're you're instilling hope in them that uh, they can get to work on a plan B and actually jettison out of rights. It can be done. It's it's a it's like, a it's a temporary stop. That's what I I hope that everybody takes out of it is that they can use it to springboard yeah. um, because it allows you some freedom that most jobs don't allow. Oh, yeah. And and so I, I hope that everybody who's spending all these hours in their vehicle are plotting their escape. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. what I want. And But there is hope to plot your escape. There is a plan B and an, a, an exit plan. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Good. Yeah. Good. Thanks. So well, how much, did you, so I wanted to ask you about how you like driving taxis. Um, well, you know, I just did it for the week and I did a flywheel, which yeah. uh, has it has an app very similar to Uber and Lyft. So yeah. um, I did I did pick up a few people, you know, that put their arm up and um, I, it was it was fine. I couldn't make as much money. That was the bottom line. So I went back to to Uber and Lyft. Yeah. But, uh, the clientele were actually much more pleasant. They were an older, older crew. They were really grateful to, uh, to to get into a taxi as opposed to Uber and Lyft. They were very anti Uber and Lyft. They were very anti yeah. rideshare, and uh, it was a lot of seniors. And also, I took a lot of people to the doctor and to the hospital. So yeah, um, that, it felt good. I felt like more. I was more of service um, to people, and they also tipped a whole lot better too. On yeah, taxi passengers. Yeah, it was it was great for me to do it and to to experience it. Um, but there just wasn't as much demand, you know, with Uber and Lyft, you know, especially in San Francisco, you know, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes in between rides, especially on the weekends. Yeah. You can't, you can't beat it. You yeah. You can't beat it, beat it for making money. Well, yeah. I, I, I wonder if, if, if one day we're going to have to, as rideshare drivers fight for the freedom of movement rights that taxis have too. I mean, how was, I mean, how was that being able to use all those lanes and all that other stuff and going, making left-hand turns where, you know, you're not usually allowed. Did you do any of that stuff? It was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to see yeah. those those big red lanes, you know, which, which yeah. I'm just not supposed to be in. But, you know, I was able to drive through them. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Making left <laughs> turns where I couldn't before. Yeah. Uh, that, I, that I missed a lot. Yeah. That was really yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So, great. All right, man. Thanks right, well, for joining nice me. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for your time. You too. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done, and uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things rideshare dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening and be safe out there.